And uh, Wendy, gosh, I feel like I could just speak with you for an hour about, or a couple hours about this, these subjects. I have so many <laughs> questions to get to you. Uh, but I wanted to ask you about cholesterol and what, what your thoughts were about cholesterol. It's a big deal for people these days, especially with all of the medications, you know, doctors are trying to force on people and... Yeah. Well, you know, um, the blood is an interesting thing. It's a, it's really living tissue, and we don't tend to think of it like that. You know, we've got the red and the white blood cells and the platelets in there, and um, diet affects that, and, you know, because our bones manufacture the blood, and what we're eating is going to affect how this blood is manufactured and, and what kind of blood we have. And, you know, we've our blood's mostly water uh, as far as, you know, content, and uh, about 80, 90 percent of it's water. So most people have blood that's much thicker, though, almost the consistency of molasses because of the fat content in there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's diet and how the liver metabolizes fat and how the gallbladder helps break down and absorb fat. So... Obviously, you might want to look into maybe some organ cleansing of the liver and gallbladder if you tend to have a lot of fat in the blood. And you can tell if you go to your doctor and they draw blood and they spin it down in the centrifuge, and you know, if you've got a lot of fat in the blood, there'll be a, a, a almost a half inch thick white layer on the top of the blood in the test tube when they spin it down so you can ask to see that um, but there are lots of herbs too that can help defat the blood but diet's going to be your biggest ally uh, diet and exercise of course so you can layer in some herbs I like to use um, red clover is a great blood detoxer and I also like to layer that with a little aloe mm -hmm. And um, if you tend to have a little bit of an arrhythmia issue, motherwort herb is excellent for getting rid of the fluttering. Um, so you, you can kind of use a combination because it's not really going to be one thing that fixes your health problem. It's going to be a combination of stuff. Uh, there really isn't any panacea out there. Um, now, of course, the ancients thought, you know, ginseng was the panacea, and actually it's known as the panax, which means panacea in the Greek. So, uh, but you know, you have to layer in some of your things. Just don't think one, one thing you're doing is going to fix it all. You have to do a combination of stuff. Yeah, I hear you because it's never just one, you know, one cause or one cure. And uh, it's interesting that the cholesterol issue is such a huge deal. And it's really kind of scary for people because, you know, their doctors you know, will almost, you know, get angry with, with a, a patient if they don't take their medication or, you know, once you do take your medication, then you're almost kind of uh, forced into, you know, continual usage because the doctor will really well, get on people. Yeah, well, cholesterol is necessary, okay? Not all cholesterol is bad. And unfortunately, when you remove a lot of cholesterol with these drugs, you wind up uh, literally having a lot of these uh, cells of the body fall apart because uh, just about every area of the body taps into cholesterol to use it, hormones and everything. Um, I think one of the best descriptions for um, the the cholesterol and um, the anti-cholesterol drugs was in um, a book called Over the Counter Natural Cures by Shane Ellison. So if you want to, if you're on any of those cardiovascular, anti-cholesterol, blood pressure medicines, his book will explain what you're in for down the road. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, you're you're going to head down to you know congestive heart failure when you're on those drugs, and you'll get what we call the zipper, where they give you you know bypass surgery. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Definitely look into something else, I would say. <laughs> Lifestyle is going to be a biggie. And here's the thing. When you go over to Europe, and they have higher cholesterol rates over there, but the people don't have the system failures. Um, they they may have higher cholesterol, but they have the healthier kind of cholesterol in their system. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they used to have here in the United States a, a uh, cholesterol rating that was normal at 300 back in the 20s and 30s. Did you know that? Yeah, I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, and then they lowered it to 200, so just about everybody would qualify for a drug. <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing. You know, I actually heard that, uh, you know, they're trying to get people down to 120, and I think that you need, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that your body can't even make hormones unless your cholesterol is at least 150. Now, I don't know if right. that's, is that right? 
Yeah, you're close. Yeah, uh, that's why I'm saying, um, like I said, <laughs> Shane Ellison's a chemist. He used to work for the pharmaceutical companies. He'd be a great guest if you haven't talked to him lately. He wrote a book, like I said. I had him on my show. And it's just, he has a great way of explaining the chemistry of it all in layman terms so that you can wrap your brain about what's happening to you when you take those type of drugs. Oh, that'd be great. So, Mm-hmm. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, because the cholesterol issue, I know, is just such a huge thing. But I wanted to um, ask you in our remaining minutes about some of the some of the herbs that you can take for men and women, uh, for men and women issues. 